You're listening to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. It is Friday. It's flower no long, Friday. It's flower Friday. You're wearing <laughs> flowers today. No one can see this, of course, no, except for me. I mean, maybe. I don't know if anyone really cares that much. I could post a selfie. It's uh, it's Fitness Friday for me because oh, hey. you know when you pack your gym bag with clothes that you're going to wear for the day and you pull them out and they're not exactly what you thought they were, Whoops. like a giant stain on the back. So you, I've done that. So guess who's actually. wearing a running shirt to the studio today? Hey, it's fine. <laughs> I wondered what was going on there though. <laughs> <laughs> didn't bother to ask. It is Friday. I'm, I'm nice it's, it's a drizzly day. Uh, there are all kinds drizzly. of flood warnings around the Midwest here, so especially much, in the St. Louis area. So much um, rain. So uh, be wise. Turn around. Don't drown. If you're uh, if you're headed down a road and it, there's water across the road, just don't do it. Don't do it. Be smart. Mm-hmm. If you're on a bike, in a car, in a truck, um, even. I don't know. I'd, probably not in a boat if you're headed down the road. But, uh, I mean, but be wise. Maybe. Be smart about it. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin, for supporting the Coffee Hour. Uh, so thankful to have your support, CUW. Check them out, cuw.edu. It's kind of like academic day here. Uh, it is academic day. At, at, on the Coffee Hour because we get to talk to a number of professors today. And hmm. so uh, thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin. Now we're going to head down to Concordia University, Texas, because we're checking out the May issue of The Lutheran Witness today yeah. and uh, taking a look look at the article, What About the Holy Spirit? And to join us uh, to discuss that today, the Reverend Dr. Curtis Giese, professor of religion at Concordia University, Texas, and author of the article, What About the Holy Spirit? Dr. Giese, thanks so much for being our guest on the Coffee Hour today. Oh, thanks for the invitation. It's great to be with you. What about the Holy Spirit? I, as I was reading this, oh man, I, and I'm thinking... We have 12 minutes to discuss three hours worth of conversation. At least three hours. (laughs) So we'll start off with the the question, one of the topics you addressed early on in the article. um, Why do Lutherans focus so much on Jesus and very little on the Holy Spirit in our preaching and teaching? Um, We do do preach and teach about the Holy Spirit. It's usually on Pentecost Sunday Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) and, and, and at other times throughout the year. But why do we focus so much on Jesus and very little on the Holy Spirit? Christ is the one who took on humanity for us. He took our place, lived a perfect life for us, died on the cross and rose victoriously, and now he intercedes uh, uh, before the Father for us. So he is the uh, the center of the saving work uh, of God. Therefore, it's uh, indeed appropriate for him to be the focus, and that's indeed the uh, what the Lutheran confessions emphasize. They state again and again that uh, the center of Holy Scripture is the saving work of Jesus Christ, and then it's the Holy Spirit's role to give us what Christ has won for us, so it's appropriate that the focus is on Jesus Christ. So then then what is the work of the Holy Spirit? What makes it uh, so unique and interesting? The role of the Holy Spirit is not to focus on himself, but rather to focus on the saving work of Christ and give what he has won to us, and the Holy Spirit works through God's Word and sacraments to bring us exactly what Christ has won for us, forgiveness, life, and salvation. And how how do we see that? uh, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but (laughs) (laughs) sorry. Uh, But um, how do we see that in the divine service? Uh, Because it is something that that we uh, encounter. Can I use that word when we're talking about the Holy Spirit? Mm. Uh, (laughs) Sorry, again. Uh, You can use that word. Okay, good. Thanks. Um, how do how do we uh, encounter or experience? Oh, I'm throwing it up. Uh, that in in the divine service. Well, there the Holy Spirit is, is richly among us as He comes to us in His Word and the holy sacraments. For example, we begin the, the divine service just as uh, Christians were baptized into the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit, and as we begin with the invocation. We are again brought into that uh, holy fellowship as uh, uh, we're reminded of our holy baptism. And then in the confession absolution, uh, we are led to recognize our sins once again, and then we receive right then and there the forgiveness that Christ has won for us in the name of the Father and the Son the Holy Spirit. So there, right there in those words, the Spirit is richly with us to give us what Christ has won. And then also in the Holy Word and in the readings uh, from Holy Scripture, the Spirit is right there uh, to remind us of what Christ has done, again, to show us our sin and then to bring us once again that good news of the salvation that Christ has won for us. And again, the Spirit is right there to bring us the benefits of what is being given right there. Or also through the Lord's Supper, Christ is there. 
uh, in his body and blood to uh, along with the bread and wine to give us the forgiveness of sins. The Holy Spirit gives us the benefits, uh, again, of what Christ is one. So all throughout the divine service, the Spirit is there to give us the gifts that Christ has won for us. And I just also in the article mentioned that as a result of that, uh, we're given the, uh, the blessing of emotions that reflect those gifts, uh, the sorrow of uh, recognizing our sins and the joy of what's been given to us, the uh, joy of being forgiven and freed and then set forth in our lives to serve him in our various vocations. So the divine service is a, a very rich place to look at the Spirit's work. Sarah's reluctance to use the E-words, <laughs> encounter, <laughs> in, experience, emotions, emotions <laughs> all those E-words. Re, reluctance to use those begs the question, why are we as Lutherans often reluctant to use those words? I'm not saying all Lutherans are reluctant to use those words, but what is it that makes us uneasy about words like that when we're talking about preaching, teaching, worship, and particularly the Holy Spirit? It's important to remember that emotions, intuitions, experiences, those are not a means through which the Holy Spirit works, but rather it's a result of the Spirit's work through God's Word and sacrament. Indeed, in Holy Scripture, emotions are mentioned time and time again, the entire array of emotions that human experience can bring. Uh, But again, as the Spirit comes to us, that is not the means, the communicator, but rather God's Word and, and Holy Sacraments. As I mentioned in the article, often in evangelical circles, you may hear of uh, an emphasis of the Spirit's work through private revelations, intuitions, inner voices, and so on. And that can be a, a bit dangerous, because that, that is not where the Spirit promises to be found, uh, but rather uh, His communication through the uh, the clear word of, of Holy Scripture. Uh, so it's important to look at where the Holy Spirit indeed promises to be, and as mentioned, emotions may come as a result of that, but we don't look to them uh, for a means of what the Holy Spirit gives to us. So the Holy Spirit doesn't promise to be in those, quote, experiences, mm-hmm. uh, those the, those private or personal experiences in the sense it doesn't come and reveal to us some secret message. That's Gnosticism, I think, isn't it? Mm-hmm. But what what do we make of, uh, and you referenced this text in, in your article as well, 1 Kings 19, 12, that, that still small voice, as some translations put it. Um, is this a promise that God will speak to us in the same way? In biblical times, uh, God did work in such a way. There is the, the record of that indeed but there's not the promise that uh, he will do uh, such things beyond uh, biblical times. So there it's important to distinguish between the descriptive versus prescriptive parts of Holy Scripture. There may be descriptions of the uh, Spirit of God working in such a way and individual communications like that, but what we have for today, uh, where the Spirit promises to be, uh, is where uh, he works through God's Word and sacrament. So he did work through that way. It's not uh, saying that the Spirit cannot work through such uh, ways, but we look for the comfort, the promise of where he promises to be found, and we know that, that he does promise to be in his Holy Word and in the sacraments. So just going back to emotions, because we as Lutherans probably feel a little allergic <laughs> to emotions at some point, um, What what is the proper way for us to understand emotions, um, not only in, in a service in church, um, but also in, in our daily lives. Uh, what is that, the proper understanding of emotions and how the Holy Spirit plays into those? Emotions are indeed a great gift as uh, we respond to and look at the various things in life, or indeed as uh, the Spirit communicates the saving work of, of God and biblical history. So as, as we look at that, Emotions are, are a wonderful thing. Uh, sometimes they lead us astray, indeed. We're, we're not perfect. But emotions uh, are reactions to the gifts that we've been given, the difficulties that we have, and so on. They are uh, responses. But they're not the, the means to which God communicates. So we do not rely on them uh, for clarity, uh, but rather 
uh, look at them as uh, uh, responses to human life. Rather, we interpret uh, situations through holy scriptures. So there we get the clarity through emotions. We don't get the, the clarity, but rather, again, they are appropriate responses. Unfortunately, sometimes our emotions are not appropriate as well. So we look to the clarity of God's Word once again. We have just under a minute left, but what I'm hearing you saying is that that, that the emotions have a place uh, understood properly in the kingdom, and uh, they're a good gift, Um, and and properly understanding how God has promised to come to us, uh, how the Holy Spirit promises to come to us in the Word. So uh, avoiding the dangers of the extremes of anti-intellectualism, where we're void of emotion, and anti-emotionalism, where we're so void of emotions and denying the gifts that God has given us in those, um, but rather understanding the proper role of all of those things. In the, in the Christian faith and preaching and teaching and worship. Uh, good stuff. I actually I want to use this article in a Bible study <laughs> it, with uh, some of the guys at church. I think this would, because you, you, you point us to all the texts, uh, many of the texts where God has promised, where the Holy Spirit promises to be mm-hmm. in. Uh, so you got to read the article, folks. You it's gotta, really good. It's in the May issue of the Lutheran Witness. Good stuff. Uh, the Reverend Dr. Curtis Giese, professor of religion, Concordia University, Texas, author of What About the Holy Spirit in the May issue of the Lutheran Witness. Dr. Giese, thanks so much for being our guest today on the Coffee Hour. It was great to be with you. Thanks so much. Next week is Teacher Appreciation Week. Send us your stories. Give us a call. Email us uh, all the, the, the Twitter sphere and face Twitter, place Facebook, and Instagram. All those places. Mm-hmm. Send us your, your uh, favorite teacher stories. We'd love to share them next week. 314-996-1542 is the listener comment line. You can call those in. Coming up in just a little bit, had a chance to sit down with uh, Professor Thomas Custer of Bethany Lutheran College in Mankato and the Christ in Media Institute. Mm-hmm. Excited to talk about that. We recorded with him yesterday. We'll share that with you in a second.